Coming up on Tech News Today, Samsung's chief says amazingly nice things about the iPad. Is he scared? We'll get to the bottom of it. Also, justice is coming to Web Video Codex. And it's time, long past time, frankly, for the IE6 Death Watch Countdown. We've got the official site for you. That more coming up. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hey, y'all, this is Tech News Today for Friday, March 5th, 2011. Tech News Today is brought to you by MailRoute.info. MailRoute is a secure hosted service that provides enterprise-grade virus and spam filtering to companies of any size. Try it right now, absolutely free, at MailRoute.info. Welcome to Tech News Today. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm Jason Howell. And that's all you get. You don't need any more on a nope. Friday. Nope. This is all you need. Thanks for joining us, everyone. All right, we'll see you later. <laughs> That's Actually, true. there's more tech news today, today than there was yesterday. And there was yesterday. Uh, Samsung's VP Lee Donju told the Korean Yonhap News Agency regarding the Galaxy Tab after seeing the iPad 2, we will have to improve the parts that are inadequate. So, so all the headlines are calls Galaxy Tab inadequate. Right. Yeah, of course. So taken out of context and and shuffled around a little yeah. bit, but. Things like price point, um, plastic parts right. that seem a little wimpy. Yeah, seem a little cheap. Right. Maybe. No, this is a good thing because uh, a lot of reviewers uh, that I know went to Mobile World Congress, picked up the Galaxy Tab 10.1 inch tablet, yes. said it felt a little cheap. Mm -hmm. So this is good for Samsung. Everybody's spinning this as like, oh, Samsung's running scared. I think it's another example of Samsung maybe not being able to say things so well. Uh, for instance, <laughs> there was the quote that Steve Jobs actually used in the iPad announcement that that uh, sales are quite small, which actually he said on the earnings call, sales are quite smooth, but everyone thought he said small. This is another thing of like, you know what? We need to make sure we put high quality parts in, in here now to compete with the iPad. If he'd said it that way, no headline. Right. But instead... Well because everyone wants to jump on anybody admitting that the iPad 2 has trounced their product well, and they yeah. got to go back to the drawing board. So it's like a sensational Samsung kind of Samsung says Apple's awesome. Yes, Samsung not, says we lose. That's not what he said. That's not what he said. Uh, also considering lowering the price of the forthcoming 10-inch tab because of the fact that Apple's kept their prices exactly the same. I think they have to. I don't think they've got a... I mean, they've got a choice. Yeah. But they're not going to sell anything unless they, unless they bring the price down, especially if somebody holds an iPad 2 and holds holds a Galaxy Tab and says, this Galaxy Tab feels a little flimsy. Yeah, right. I mean, if the price is lower, then okay, you've got something. Meanwhile, Apple, uh, a lot of people pointed out we did not hear anything about Mobile Me or iTunes during the announcement. This is not what Apple is doing these days. It's one announcement per event. Right. It's not the Macworld model anymore where they're going to announce three different things and a one more thing. You might still occasionally get a one more thing, but these, are, these events are very specific. So I wasn't surprised that we didn't hear about MobileMe. But uh, Bloomberg today has an article naming, una <laughs> actually not naming, unnamed music sources. Familiar uh, with the matter. Music industry <laughs> sources say uh, that Apple is in talks with the four major labels about allowing multiple downloads of purchased songs just like you are able to do with your apps, mm -hmm. if you delete an app off of your iPad or your iPhone, you can still download it without having to pay for it again uh, later or if you get a new device. Uh, I, this uh, would be a welcome feature. Uh, I'm going to th this, uh, this exact sort of issue right now because I've got this old MacBook that's going to bite the dust any day and that's where all my music is. I know how to transfer my music onto other devices. Yeah, but Sarah, because all you have to do is, <laughs> yeah, no, is I know take I all your music in from the folder, and then you just drag it to an external device. Right, and then from the external device, yeah. and then I then I re-download. I know what my steps are, and it's the kind of thing that I go, maybe next Saturday, maybe next right. Saturday. So so all the people in the chat room, people are emailing, like, well, Sarah, the easy way to do this is, you're like, no. What I would like to do yeah. is sync it to the cloud mm -hmm. using MobileMe, which is a service I pay for. 
and be able to download it to one of my many Apple devices that I now have. That would be great. Well, what's even better about this, if it's true, is that you don't even have to sync it to the cloud. You'd be able to just access it from that device if you purchased it through iTunes. Perfect. They'd have a record of everything. So Love you wouldn't it. even have to upload it. You'd just download it again. Bloomberg also repeating the rumor that mobile me will become free. I'm starting to believe that that rumor has got some solid solidity to it. But I think we're, I think we're going to see mobile me uh, turned into a free product within a month. I don't know. I mean, if it, if, if it becomes something that's, uh, a, a, you know, a digital copy of all of your files... Don't you think that that's actually something that they can justify making you pay for? I mean, I'm paying $69 a year. It's 99 but if you, if you bundle it in when you buy something through the mm -hmm. Apple Store, it's, I've gotten it for 69 the last couple of years. But, you know, every time I do, I'm like, what am I really buying? You well, know, some synced contacts? Yeah, and they're, com they're competing with things like Google and Microsoft sure. who are offering free or cheap mm -hmm. storage in the cloud. And I think what they're going to do is they're going to bring that North Carolina data center online and they're going to say, mobile me is free. You got an Apple device? We made the money off you through the Apple device. Mm -hmm. We're going we're gonna to give you cloud services for free on any Apple device or any Apple software. So if you're using iTunes on Windows, you'd still be able to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And the I, fact I, that they I would removed, love it to be free. They removed the mobile me boxes from the store. That's what makes me think. Okay. Well, I just bought a mobile me box two days ago, Tom. Two no, you ago. didn't, because I read a report that they removed them from the store. Okay. So you must be imagining it. Hold on. So uh, the the Apple event was Wednesday. On Tuesday, I bought a Mobile Me box. Yeah, Not I read. Even kidding. I, I read before that. And I looked that, at it and went, "What is this?" I read before that that the Mobile Me boxes were gone. Yeah, well, so, uh, your you source you is familiar be, you with the matter. Right. We're bunk. I read it on the internet. Borked source. <laughs> Can't, it must be true. Uh, no, but they are taking. They are out of the uh, the online store, and I guess they're going to slowly disappear from the shelves. It's, it's a good thing at the uh, at the stores. Uh, update for Windows Phone Seven. You thought we were done talking about this story? Well, we're not. Uh, it appears that some owners of the Samsung Omnia Seven uh, are having problems with the new patched update that was supposed to be okay for Samsung owners. Nobody's getting a bricked phone. They're just having a problem installing it. Microsoft is aware of it. Uh, if you get an error numbered 8000705B4, they say, refrain from making repeated attempts to, the, uh, to install the update. They're working on the problem. Uh, it turns out some people have found that if they freed up four gigabytes of memory, that allowed them to do the installation successfully mm -hmm. uh but that's not working in all cases and man if you go to the windows phone 7 twitter account it is just flooded with them trying to reach out and help people and and address this problem that's where they said we, you know we were aware of this error this 800705b4 error <laughs> and we're working on it i which i believe that they're doing it's just they're really uh their track record here is not looking great you know Update doesn't work. Update to update. Weird error. Eight seven zero two three four five. There's going to be another update later. No one's going to believe them that it's even going to work at this point. It's just, yeah. it's just not. It's what, just not a good what's, scenario. What's so bad about it is that it. it and as Dimitri took me to task for earlier on the show, mm -hmm. uh, it's certainly not the first phone update to go wrong. But what's so what's so upsetting about it is that it's not even an update that adds f functionality. It's an update to that fix, paves the way yeah. for adding functionality. So right. you're not even getting the copy and paste this time. It's just a headache. It's a headache for anybody that it's affecting. And the whole, hey, now if I have four gigabytes free, now it's working is like this unintuitive thing that nobody would just, I mean, you'd have to really go through a lot of trial and error, just get lucky to figure out that that was the issue. So... It's just very inconvenient. No, but at least Microsoft's going to be coming out with a tablet OS soon. Oh, how soon? Like maybe, oh, I don't know. It'd be like March 15th. It'd be pretty cool. Well, fall 2012. Oh. That's pretty well, soon. Well, the world will right? be over by then, so they can just say that if they want to. <laughs> That'll be the last thing you see <laughs> is the uh, Windows for tablets OS. That could be the, the reason the man. world ends, actually. Yes, perhaps. Uh, yeah, Bloomberg's anonymous sources report that Microsoft uh, won't release a tablet operating system until the 2012 back-to-school season and uh, will only begin to publicly test that OS at the end of this year. Boy, I think this is a really bad move on Microsoft's part. Tw fall of 2012? I mean, fall of 2011, it's going to be 
a tablet saturated crazy marketplace. Fall of 2012, I mean, no one, who, who's not going to have a tablet that really wants a tablet by then? Who's going to go, I'm into this Windows 8 tablet? But see, what Microsoft's doing is saying, look, we want to get this right. We want to come. We want to come out with a tablet operating system that isn't just Windows yeah. shoved into a tablet, which is what we've done in the past a lot of times. I mean, there's that rumor running around that Dell is going to have a Windows 8 tablet out in January. Sure. Whether we even see Windows 8 by January or not, that would probably not be a Windows for tablet operating system. This is this is Microsoft saying we need to make a Windows for tablet the way Apple made OS 10 for tablet in iOS. I think that they, I, you know, I, mean, I understand the that they record. need. They did it with Zoom. Yeah. They've done it with Windows Phone 7. But they're always late. And therefore, they come out with a whimper. Okay. And Sure. I, I just, I, hey, you want to make a great product? They were product? late with Internet Explorer, and that one worked out well for a while. <laughs> That's true. Uh, yes, Windows Explorer. You know, it's everybody's favorite browser. But... I, I don't know. I just think it's like, yes, I understand that every company wants to put out the best product as possible. And in many cases, shoving out something early that's not ready for market is a really bad, uh, is, is a bad move. That said, Microsoft is a huge company. They have very talented people working for them. They have this reputation of being late to the game mm -hmm. or have for the last couple of years. And to bring a tablet to market that's Finally, we're finally ready. I mean, it's just going to be Windows Phone 7 all over I think, again. I think the opposite side could be just as bad, though. If they rushed out with a Windows 7 for tablets that was wonky, mm -hmm. uh, like what we saw last year at CES. Right. Where they were like, yeah, we're going to have Windows 7 on tablets. And everyone was like, okay, battery life's pretty crappy. It just seems to be like Windows 7 shoved in. I got to use a stylus. That does not compete with iPad down the road. This is before Windows knew, Microsoft knew what iPad was going to be. Yeah. Granted, and so this year they retrenched. So I, it could be it could be really bad if they forced Windows Phone onto a tablet, or they forced Windows Seven into a tablet, it, and then that could poison the well. Right now, Microsoft, for all of their pushing tablet for a decade, is not associated with tablets anymore, and I think they know that that's a good thing. And they the, when they come with their tablet OS, they need to make it positive from the beginning. But that's also the reason that it's so odd and strange that it's going to take them so long because they're sort of like damned if they uh push something out too early and and darned if they uh if they if they wait till everyone has already got their cool tablets out before them but microsoft is the company most associated with the tablet legacy right. they're gonna be last yep so uh but the last shall be first right yes. microsoft fans of course hey I, I i just like to see one you know competition's yep. good yeah absolutely. i don't want to wait uh, I mean, there's some good stuff coming from Android, but the more, more the merrier. And, and the WebOS tablet. Let's not forget. That too. Uh, and the BlackBerry Playbook. I'm loving the QNX. <laughs> ah, yes. So there's a lot of competition mm -hmm. out there mm -hmm. for you, Microsoft. Yeah, and they're going to be first. All right, we're going to have a uh, web video war, it looks like, and justice is coming. What? The U.S. TNT Marshals against Twitch. are getting on their horses and oh, no. riding up to Dip. the... Silicon different kind of well, the Wall Street Journal reports that the Department of Justice is looking into whether the actions of patent licensing group MPEG LA is stifling Goog poor little Google's video mm. encoding uh, codec VP8, aka WebM. It's the open source uh, video standard. Yeah, and then so uh, you know, for those who haven't been following this uh, on Tech News today, uh, WebM is Google's video codec that they say is patent-free and they're making available for free for anyone to use so that we could all standardize on one video codec and doesn't matter what browser you're using, uh, your video would play embedded without the need of a plugin through HTML5. Microsoft and Apple are resisting that and going with H.264 for, uh, as their horse that they're backing. MPEG LA is the licensing group for H.264 codec. Right? Yes. So they have an interest in Apple and Microsoft succeeding with H.264. So they have started a search for patents that would infringe on Google's WebM. If they can find any, then that make, that's, will scare people off from wanting to use WebM as a standard. So what's weird about this whole story is, first of all, MPEG LA are saying, listen, we're, we're merely, we're the, I think they said, the convenience store for patents. If you want to use this, there's royalties to be paid, and it's just a transaction. We have no vested interest in however this plays out. Right. Well, of course they do. 
And then Microsoft says, Microsoft has several patents, but they, they claim anyway that they pay into this, uh, the, you know, this, this MPLA yeah, yeah. more they, than they get they out of it. They say they, they cost they them more. They lose money yeah, on yeah. this. And Apple has one patent and also claims that they pay uh, however much royalty money to into MPLA per year. Apple definitely is paying more than they're getting back. Well, so it's like, so what? what's really going on here? I mean, I are they just trying to squelch Google and I, stick it to Google? With Apple, I think they really believe H.264 is the better codec. It's, it's the, there are no patent questions around it. Right. They think it works better with their technology. Apple is, is very dogmatic that way. Once mm -hmm. they believe in a technology and they think it works best, they don't want right. to consider anything it's else. It's hard to convince yeah. Apple that they're going Microsoft, I think, is looking at it saying, gosh, we'd really love WebM. In fact, we'll help Google make a WebM implementation for Internet Explorer, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we're a little afraid of the patent situation here. We're not convinced that Google is actually going to be able to provide it without any kind of patent encumbrance, which is a fairly... Uh, a fairly rational way of approaching it, the way patent law is today. Right. There, there's you can never unequivocally say anything is patent free unless it's 50 years old. Yeah, and the folks at MPEG LA are like, listen, VPA infringes on many patents. Anyone who thinks otherwise is just wrong. So then it turns into this. Okay, well, let's see the evidence. You yeah. know what? And so the reason where where are the infringements? And this is going to be this long, drawn out, crappy. Uh, patent war i don't know and to bring it back home the reason the department of justice is getting involved is regulators are interested in whether mpeg la is quashing vp8 uh, if they're trying to drive a competitor out of the market with fear by setting up this sort of idea that there isn't uh, that, that it isn't free of patent problems, mm -hmm. uh, even if it is free of patent problems, that they could be found in violation of something or other. Uh, but yeah, something, uh, something we should have Andy Beach on uh, to help explain, because he, he knows the codex. We'll, we'll try to get him on uh, next time we have something breaking about this. Also, a couple of other uh, interesting stories to, to pick up before we move into news views. Uh, Bing is adding Kayak for their travel search partnership. We've mentioned this before. Bing is using their own Faircast service mm -hmm. so that when you start typing in like JFK to SFO, it would give you a fare, and Faircast will tell you whether they think that fare is going to go up or down. So it'll help you decide whether it's the right time to buy. Bing is going to have Kayak now provide the data that tells you what those fares are. They're still going to use Faircast to tell you whether the fare will go up or down, though. Uh, okay, this is sort of like, it's one of those things where I say, well, if I don't use Bing and I go to kayak.com and I search for fares, I don't know how much that partnership will affect me. I guess if you're just I circumvent in, it if I wanted to. If you're just living in Bing, yeah, you know, and then if you've always got that open, it's just easy to go, all right, I'm, uh, I'm going to Sure, Ord. It's, a, it's a nice integrated, I, I like kayak, I like their service. So um, right now I typed Ord to JFK. And it tells me flights from Chicago to New York, $197, Thursday, March 31st through Saturday, April 2nd. Doesn't give me, and it gives me a green, it? it gives me a green arrow saying they're only going up. Mm -hmm. You might want to buy them now. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty handy. Yeah. So then I click through and then, uh, then I'll be able to book it. And all Bing that users stuff. rejoice. Kayak partnership. Now, Libya will not be able to take advantage of this right now because uh, the Libyan government has cut off the Internet again. Mm. Uh, Libya blocked Internet traffic a couple weeks ago and then quickly restored it. That time they did it the same way Egypt had done it. They removed themselves from the border gateway protocol, so they essentially disappeared from the Internet. Uh, this time they've erected a firewall which means you can punch holes in the firewall, uh, conceivably. Uh, the reason you would do a firewall instead of removing yourself from the border gateway protocol is if you want some computers to still be able to access the Internet. So you give the firewall the addresses of those computers and give them permission. Perhaps you're a colonel of something who believes that your protesters are on hallucinogenic drugs <laughs> and you still want to be able to access the Internet to find out what the rest of the world is saying about you. Very silly hypothetical example, Tom. Right, right. But Who yes, would do that? Something happened, like that. But, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, a relatively simple thing, but uh, interesting. Libya also, by the way, uh, unlike Egypt, only has one ISP. I mean, there, there are multiple companies that sell Internet access, but they all go through the state-owned Libya Telecom and tele Technology Company. So very easy to put a firewall up there sure. at LTT, and it blocks all of the traffic coming in and out. Well... For the people of Libya's sake, I hope that they get their internet access restored soon. Well, the fact that it's a firewall means it's 
you can hack around it. Yeah. But the Border Gateway but Patrol, I mean, pro- protocol, Border Gateway Patrol, that's when they, they send the troops out <laughs> on the router. Uh, the, Stop I'm gonna, surfing. Hey, wait. See that packet? Shoot it. <laughs> uh, border Gateway Protocol is really hard to hack around. It's, it's almost impossible to hack around. On to the news fuse. <laughs> The semi-annual J.D. Powers and Associates survey is out, and 26,000 subscribers have spoken. Verizon Wireless has the best wireless service in terms of phone call quality in many parts of the U.S. anyway. Quality is based on things like dropped calls, static interference, failed call connections, voice distortion, voicemail problems, and texting issues. And I just signed up for Sprint. I just got a Verizon phone, as I mentioned, uh, just several days ago. Tuesday, I guess it was. So I'm I'm very happy with these results. What Although, phone did you get? Uh, the iPhone. Oh, the iPhone. Yeah. That's right. Got the iPhone. I remember that. Uh, I have noticed, um, you know, just, just an off note that it's slower than AT&T's uh, network. But hey, I've it got does some, seem more reliable. I've got some uh, aspirin over here for you to drop off at Matt Mullenweg's house. <laughs> Some aspirin? Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, the WordPress engineers, they have probably really got some serious headache, uh, even migraines at this point, because WordPress, which is, of course, the popular blog service, was hit with its second DDoS attack this morning after an original attack yesterday. We talked about it on the show. It disrupted about 18 million hosted blogs, including some very high-profile blogs. WordPress parent company Automatic, led by Matt Mullenrag himself, was able to press back See what I did there? Against today's attack today uh, pretty quickly. And they say they're continuing to monitor the situation closely. Uh, we should maybe, yeah, yeah, send them some aspirin. We Stop should. laughing at me. You know, I'm slow on the uptake sometimes, Tom. I'm laughing at your amazing wit. <laughs> Google's, Whatever. <laughs> Google's released technology to fix Android's fragmentation problem, which has plagued developers who want Android to run on many different devices. Google's new fragment library great name Mm -hmm. is built into honeycomb and offers tools to get around issues like different screen size for those using brand new android 3.0 already running in devices like motorola zoom or xoom as you might say yeah the xoom google blogger has been outlawed in turkey what yeah over a few a few football games actually a court has banned the service after satellite tv firm digiturk complained that some blogger profiles were turning up streaming media feeds of local games you can't do that not in digiturk land no word on how long the 600,000 turks that are actually going to be affected by this ban may have to wait for their service to be restored because as you might recall once youtube was banned in turkey it took two years when for them they to get it back yeah when they ban things in turkey they, they ban them. really ban them the whole youtube thing was over one video about the founder of turkey at a turk and it was like poking fun at, yeah it, he, and, he is and a it, national hero well, and, but instead of taking down that video they just like youtube you're no gone one, no two one years YouTube. see ya yeah you're in turkish internet prison think about what you didn't do Yasser Afifi, you remember him? The college student who found a GPS tracking device on his car during an oil change uh, two days before FBI agents stopped him outside his home and said, we need that back. Uh, He has filed a lawsuit against the Bureau of Investigation Federal. Afifi maintains that he's never done anything to warrant being monitored secretly, and he would like the feds to pay. Well... I don't know. I shouldn't laugh at that story. I still think it's just, it's like, it's pretty funny you're going enough. for an oil change. What is that? Yeah. The, the guy, the like, guy do, uh, changing your oil is like, what I is I was changing your oil and I found this. It says property of the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation on it. What? I never did anything to warrant this. What the hell's going I'm on? I'm suing. I'm suing you. Uh, Tom's old boss, Neil Ash, has finally been replaced at CBS Aww. Interactive by an acquire hire almost as good as an undercover cover lover. CBS just announced the acquisition of Clicker, which is the internet video guide website, and they'll install Clicker CEO and co-founder Jim Lanzoni, or Lanzone, as president of CBS Interactive. Expect some new combinations of TV.com and Clicker in the future. Mm -hmm. I love that CBS Interactive is now run by a guy named Lanzone. (laughs) This is the Lanzone party. Get it? Not really. No. Okay. No. The rocket carrying NASA's Glory satellite, an observation <laughs> spacecraft designed to study the effect atmospheric particles have on the planet's climate, failed as badly as that last joke I just made <laughs> uh, due to an engineering That's glitch bad. with its nose cap. Uh, the rocket's fairing, which is an aerodynamic cone designed to separate during the trip into space, didn't come off as planned. 
And so the rocket has totally failed. Let the climate conspiracy theories begin. Glory days. Dun, 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 dun. The Kronos Group has released the final Web GL 1.0 specification to enable hardware accelerator 3D graphics and HTML5 web browsers without the need for plugins. WebGL has the support of major silicon and browser vendors, including Apple, Google, Mozilla, and Opera, with multiple browsers already shipping with WebGL implementation. So get ready for 3D HTML5 gaming, bro. Maybe we can use WebGL to do video. <laughs> Because <laughs> they seem to be able to get everybody on the same page. Uh, All right, uh, let's finish it off with a uh, fake video for the Apple iPad done by none other than the man who inspired my beard, Conan O'Brien, on uh, oh, the Conan show last night. Coco. He, we'll, we'll, do, we'll, we'll just play it yeah. and let, let you Thank see. You. Take a look. iPad 2 is the culmination of literally two to three meetings. It's truly incredible how little we did. We knew that if we changed the color, put pictures of water droplets on the desktop, made it a little faster, added two holes with cheap cameras in them, then just kind of flattened it a bit, people would just go nuts. One of my favorite things about the iPad 2 launch is that I get to keep this tight black shirt, which I think really pops against white backgrounds. <laughs> is iPad 2 incredible? Yes. Are you believing what I am saying partially because I have a non-specific ethnic accent? Absolutely. A lot of customers will say, what about me? I just bought the old iPad. And uh, to you, I say, off. <laughs> and finish this by saying, iPad 2, you'll buy it no matter what we say. I love that. That's true. Uh, you know, for the, there's, there's actually a few Apple fans in the chat room who are like, this, this makes me angry. And Why? you just you have to take it all in good fun. This is a... It's a parody. It's Conan. And, and, and <laughs> I mean. even if you love Apple to death, you have to admit that, you know, they always have the white background with the guy in the black turtleneck and make the claims. And it's, it's come on, it's When fun. you tease like that, it's because you love. Yeah, tease because you love. You don't think that all those Conan staffers are going to go out and buy iPad 2s? They probably... They aren't paid yeah, enough, but if they were, they would. Were, <laughs> yes. they, would. But, yeah, they will ask Conan to... To at least buy them for him. For I mean, him. we did that fake promo, so come on. Yeah. <laughs> Apple fans, you're still very, very dominant. You're on top. Start complaining when you're not anymore. You're it's still a, the king. It's a very good product, but they do tend to over yes. exaggerate the importance of their innovations. With sometimes. ambiguous accents sometimes. <laughs> yes, it is true. <laughs> on to the calendar. <laughs> All right. Okay, Star Wars fans, I've got some news for you. Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Everyone's favorite, uh, if you pull, you know, 600,000 people in Turkey, the they'll certainly tell you that The yeah. Phantom Menace is the, is the best Star Wars. It's going to return to theaters in 3D, February 12th, 2012. And to that I say... <laughs> I don't know. I'm just not excited about this. Uh, well, it is the very first... In the chronology that Lucas set out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fine. It's, it's just too bad that they have to start this new path. It is the with best this uh, yeah. you know, of the episode one sense. Star Wars now, movies. The, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, and I even I took a little offense to how much some people hated it because I was just so happy that there were new Star Wars movies in the, you know, in the Star Wars legacy. That said, I just feel like I don't know. I just I'm over it. Uh, all right, this Sunday, March 6th, AT&T is going to start selling uh, the Kindle 3G e-reader in its retail stores. So, hey, if you're near an AT&T store on a Sunday, just walk right in and get yourself a Kindle. The Wi-Fi-only Motorola Zoom has it's pronounced appeared... pronounced Xoom. It's not pronounced Xoom. Yes, it is. Really? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's the way it's spelled. <laughs> it, I just... Okay. That's like saying... Yes, it is. Maybe. <laughs> that's like saying xylophone. Yeah. Yep. I'm not going to do that either, okay? Xylophone. You know how many times I talk about xylophones in a given day? It's well, I'm not just xylophone. Oh, my God. The <laughs> Wi-Fi-only Motorola Xoom is appearing at Sam Club with a... It's Sam's Club. 
Sam's Club. What did I just say? Sam Club. Sam Club. Gosh. Sam's Club. I've never been in one it's of those. Sam's Club. <laughs> Sam's Club. It's like a Walmart for Costco. That's what Tom described it to me before That's pretty the show. much right. Sam's Club. It's, it's a, a wholesale. It's the Costco of Walmart. It's a wholesale merchandise. Run by the Walmart real, uh, real <laughs> retailer. Gosh. And fine. They've, they've, seen, they've seen a Zoom with a 539 price tag, but they say don't get too excited because it's probably still going to retail at $5.99. But, you know, if you're near Sam's Club, then maybe you can get, get a discount. Yeah, yeah. What, $50 off the price or totally. something like that? Uh, we are nearing... <clears throat> A final countdown of sorts. The death count. It's the Internet Explorer 6 countdown to the death. Where, yes, this is from Microsoft, by the way, ie6countdown.com, in an effort that Microsoft has gotten behind for a while now to eradicate the world of the horribly inadequate Internet Explorer 6 that 12% of the world still insists on using. Uh, they've put up this countdown that allows you to see just what percentage of the populace in various countries are still using the browser and hopefully counting it down to zero it's as fast as possible. Countdown. Look at China with 34%. Wow. wow. Well, you know, they have a lot of people in general. So. Yeah, well, so does the rest of the world, but come on. Yeah, I know. Let's uh, well, let's we're get. Counting down. They they they're also color coding it. I love Norway and Finland get green icons because they're less than one percent. Well done, Norway and Finland. You guys rock. You're so Sweden. ahead. Sweden. Looking at you next. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's up? Complete the Scandinavian sweep. Come on, be cool. Be cool like your neighbors. Um, finally, in our calendar coverage, uh, just a reminder that we'll be at South by Southwest on March 12th and 13th, and we're going to be doing all sorts of cool stuff. Saturday, we'll be out and about streaming and shooting shows, talk to the folks and shaking hands and kissing babies. And then on Sunday, um, oh, no. and by the way, there's a lot of information at plancast.com slash twit. We put together a little plancast, but, uh, we're shooting a live episode of TNT, live episode of twit. And then a meetup immediately after at a place called Momo's uh, that's right downtown and it holds about 500 people. So come one, come all, unless you're person 501 and then we'll and come then outside, just outside and kiss your baby. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Bring your baby. Uh, but anyway, it's going to be really fun. We want to meet as many of you as possible. So if you can get there, please join us. It'll be great. And if you can't, remember, we'll be live streaming it so yeah. you can watch at home. You, if you can't make it to Austin or even if you live in Austin, you're like, I'm not going downtown during South by Southwest. That's I don't actually want to meet which you. Which is the entire six years <laughs> that I lived in Austin. That's exactly how I felt. Mm -hmm. You can just turn on the live stream. You know, grab yourself your favorite beverage, put your feet up, enjoy yeah. South by Southwest yeah. the way it was meant to be enjoyed. You don't need to come and hang out with us internet. IRL. <laughs> that could be weird. Just just watch the live stream. It'll be fun. All right, on to the voicemails. You can call and leave us a voicemail at 260-TNT-SHOW. That is our phone number. Or you can even record it yourself on your very own computer and email it to us like Phil did. Hey TNT crew, this is Phil in North Carolina. Had a question about the iPad 2 smart covers. How will the Apple Store display those covers so customers will be able to have the full user experience of them? Will they leave them lying on the tables? Will they have those awful security cables attached to them? Or will they have a designated smart cover team ready to lend them to customers? So far I've seen no place in the media where they've covered this vital issue. Thanks guys. That is I, a vital issue, Phil. Uh, I assume, you know, some Apple stores, they've got all of their accessory type things, you know, maybe on like a second level or something. I mean, obviously they have security in the stores. I could see them maybe burying, you know, most of the inventory besides a couple of covers in the front. Yeah, most of the covers aren't closely. out of the box. You can't, you can't yeah. see how they work. They're, right. they're stuck in the box. I have seen uh, Apple, G are they Genie Eye? Are yes. they all Genie Eye? Or are they... The blue shirts even, too? Uh, anyway, I've seen uh, Apple retail store everyone employers. everyone kind of does everything. I have seen the employees come over and open up boxes for people so that they right. can see how they work. I imagine that's what they'll do. Yeah. They'll have a box that they can open up and say, like, Here, here's what it looks like. Because this, But this one is more than other cases, needs a little explanation, needs a little showing up. It needs a little explanation and, at least as far as I understand it, is easy to go and just run out. Although it has magnets. So if you have a really, <laughs> well, not that strong. A really powerful magnet at the storefront, <laughs> rip it out of your jacket. If you implant a magnet under your skin, on your right forearm, uh, yeah, it's a really easy getaway. But also, for those of us who won't do that right. before the covers go on sale, you might need to be uh, a little more crafty. Yeah. So implant earth magnets, Phil. Yes. That's, 
That's, that's what we're saying. Yeah, piece of cake. Uh, Ollie wrote in to our email address, which I don't know if you were thinking of writing in yourself. You might want to know. It's TNT at Gmail at gmail.com yeah no that's not gonna work tnt no. at twit.tv <laughs> it's tech news today show at gmail.com if you want to that will work the secret under but don't even bother remembering that tnt at twit.tv is 40 thieves uh from the chat room wrote in and said here's a story from yesterday in the uk uh o2 one of the big mobile networks over here has begun filtering traffic on its network to block supposedly over 18 content which kicked up a bit of a Twitter storm. If you search on the hashtag O2Fail, the filter not only blocks sex education charities, but there have been quite a few reports of personal blogs being blocked too. Plus, O2 are making customers pay to unblock the service. This unfortunately seems to have been ignored by quite a few news outlets, perhaps because Vodafone and T-Mobile already do it. Uh, those are O2's main competitors. I think it's a very bad step down the anti-net neutrality road and one that could easily be fixed by making the filter opt in, not opt out. I agree with 40 Thieves. Opt out. Opt out. Uh, what I mean, what's going on with this filter? I mean, are they like just blocking anytime someone uses a popular sex-related term and that's why... Yeah, I mean, these filters you have know, been... Ta you know, why is it that wireless companies are getting away with this? Would get blocked. When Australia tried to do this, when the UK considered doing this on a national basis, everybody freaked out and said, look, these filters don't work. They right. block more good things than they exactly. block bad. There's always ways around them. And then the mobile carriers get to do this? That's that's outlandish. So opt out of that. Opt out and thanks Although to Although it costs Ollie. you money to do it, and they should change it to opt in. They should change it so that if you want to have this broken filter on your phone, you can charge. They can charge you to opt into it. That's what they should That's do. That's how it always should be. Yeah. Always, always, always opt in. Yeah. Sometimes I want to see the word sex. I've said it. It's out there. Whoa! I just. That's TMI. just. I. I'm yeah, sorry. I opt out of that. Right. <laughs> but, I mean, but that's your choice. Pictures, maybe, that is but not the word. <laughs> Pictures of unicorns. Listen, sometimes I like to read uh, blogs of sex education charities. Right. And I want to be able to have that well, opportunity. I run. I have run since the mid-90s a parody news blog that I don't talk about much called Some Brilliant News. And it is blocked everywhere because it's parody. And so there's some, you know, there's some edgy stories in there going back to 1996 that school, all every school filter ever, ev everywhere blocks it. Yeah, I mean, it's just that's exactly why filters don't work. And you won't be able to, get, able to see it on your O2 phone now. Well, that's a bummer. Anyway, thanks to uh, 40 Thieves for sending that along. And thanks to you for watching. Uh, we will be back Monday with an all-new show. I'll be in Florida. <laughs> why, Tom? Why? What? What's the matter? Why are you leaving in Florida? Oh, because I have a speaking engagement at Raytheon. Oh, Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. But I'll be Skyping in. Okay. Yeah, I even bought oh. this new Sprint Overdrive so that I can... Wonderful. You know, I shouldn't do that because that makes it look up. like... I brought this no one paid for product device that will allow me to use 4G. You know, eventually they're going to get rid of that home button. 4G. <laughs> Twit.tv slash TNT. We'll see you up Monday. Bye, everybody.